afternoon, folks. Big Bo with RV's Big Bo at Parkway RV Center. Got another Class C bargain we're going to review today in a hard-to-find smaller Class C that'll probably be gone by the end of the week, if not sooner. Are you looking for a 2020 Jayco Red Hawk SE 22C with a slide? Do you want the lowest price one in the country? Congratulations, you found it. This is a 2020 Jayco Red Hawk 22C. Has 5,022 miles. Guys, you don't believe me as of today. June 4th, 2022. This is the lowest priced one on all, currently on RV Trader nationwide. By not just two or three thousand dollars. It is the lowest price 20. 20 out of eight of them that's listed out of 200,000 RVs on RV Trader. There's eight 2020 Jayco uh, Greyhawk 22 C's out of those eight. This is the lowest priced one by almost $15,000 and to top all that the one that's 79.9 has actually got 500 more miles on it than this one does. That's why y'all watch my channel, guys. That's why y'all listen to me rant on for deals just like this. This is why people travel all over the United States to buy used RVs in Ringgold, Georgia from Parkway RV Center because of deals just like this. This is a 2020 Jayco Red Hawk SE 22C built on a Chevrolet 4500 Class C motorhome. Got the six liter Vortec V8. Very impressive, 342 horsepower out of a smaller V8, 373 pound-feet of torque with a six-speed um, automatic transmission. This thing will get up and go. Four KW Onan generator. They just don't come any finer than this in a, in a used motorhome, guys. The only way you're going to get one nicer than this is spend almost $100,000 and buy a brand new one and wait for several months for it to be built. Got the stable track, you got front and rear stabilizer bars, Hellwick, Helper Springs, got the J-Ride. I mean, this thing drives incredible. You know, it's not on a 3,500 one ton. This is a ton, a ton and a half chassis. So you got a wider wheelbase, so it's better stability, less sway going down the road because you've got a shorter wheelbase than say like a 30 foot or 28 foot uh, Class C motorhome. Overall length is 25 feet, two inches. That's bumper to bumper at its longest point. It does have a slide out, it does have a bed slide. So this is a 25 foot motorhome with an actual Queen Island stationary bed. And you know, traditionally before they started putting the rear corner slide out in them, in a 25 foot motorhome, you had to get that dreaded corner bed, corner bath that you can't hardly make the bed up in with a cramped bathroom. Well, this one, you actually get a Queen Island walk around bed. 5,000 pound tow capacity, which is all you really ever need on a Class C anyway. Uh, it's got the uh, ladder on the back. You've got your uh, slide out. Now, guys, I was going to put some uh, stimul uh, simulators on it. And uh, of course, these have steel wheels, so they won't go on it. Sorry about that. But you polish those steel wheels up, probably look really good. Generator just humming like it's supposed to. I mean, just a well-built, probably one of the best-built Class C's in the current market. One little spot right there on the stripe. And I'm trying to fault this thing, guys. Look at the overlapping cap. No window in the cab over. Huge plus for me. I like the fact it's on a Chevrolet chassis. You know, I actually... Even though my current motor home is this size and it's a Ford, and, and don't get me wrong, it's a V10, I love it, but I do prefer the ride and drive of a Chevrolet in a smaller motor home. You know, if this was a 30 footer or something like that, yeah, I'll take a Ford all day long, but um, in a smaller motor home like this, I prefer the ride and drive of a Chevrolet or GMC or workhorse. Power awning, power step, Let's look at this, Jayco. One flaw, and I actually read about this online. This is actually a pretty common problem. And I am going to, uh, tomorrow, try to see if uh, we can find a shock for it and fix it for you at no charge. Uh, the table has a shock on it that is frozen up. And this is a pretty common problem. 
so it won't allow it to lay down flat so it's sitting up at an angle right now and uh we're gonna take care of it. it's just a little shock it's about a 25 dollar part we're gonna try to get you one and stick on it for you uh here in the next couple of days just got to try to find one somewhere and and put it on for you so that's why the table's sitting all lopsided but that's the only reason sometimes those little hydraulic shocks just it's kind of like what goes on a lift gate of a car they just freeze up sometimes guys no reason no rhyme or reason even brand new but we'll take care of that for you and that's other than that that's i can't really knock it for anything else it still has a new rv smell to it guys there's no smoke or pet odors i like the fact it's got a rubber mat in the front cab um 5022 miles dash air of course ice cold tilt cruise power windows power locks no warning lights uh dash looks great heated power or excuse me just the power mirrors all heated mirrors uh got a stereo tow haul mode traction control you can manually shift through the gears if you want to and that's mostly for going up steep inclines or going down steep inclines like mountains and stuff like that to hold it in the gear and to, you know lay off your brake a little bit especially going downhill if you're towing a camper or towing a trailer seats look great there are a 32 inch tv on a swivel hadn't cleaned it up or anything this is just how it came in seven foot tall ceilings you do have um i didn't look up the size of the ac i'm gonna assume a 13.5 it could be a 15 but you're uh, hang on i'll tell you real quick it is 13.5 which is all you need in fact it's blowing icicles in here so i mean you're not talking about this thing's 100 inches wide uh, the cab area is what 20 22 feet long maybe so you're only talking, what is that, uh, 140 square feet, 150, maybe not even that. I'm, I'm not too good at mental math sometimes. You're not talking about a lot of space to cool off. So it would cool, it. this right here would cool off with like a 5,000 BTU air conditioner. So 13.5 is really over, overkill. Got some overhead storage. I uh, got the King Dome omnidirectional antenna. Not like the old days where you had to remember to crank up and crank down your antenna and hope you didn't leave it up when you pull out so you don't snag a power line or rip it off your roof. <laughs> um, you do have a double basin sink, which is always a nice thing to see in a small motor home. Uh, double burner stove top. Got some extra storage here. Microwave. And a convection oven. That's always a plus uh refrigerator freezer which i haven't had it on long enough to get cold it's six cubic foot of course and it does run on propane or electric so this must have been a early 2020 before they went to all 12 volt so pre-pandemic in fact i think it is i think i saw the date it was one of 20s when it was built so good deal <laughs> that's actually a good thing believe me um queen bed in the back in the slide out of course you got some blue led reading lights don't look like much now but when the lights are out it's dark they throw out some good light now guys one thing i want to point out the downside of this design which i know it allows you to have a 25 foot small motorhome easy to drive and park and still have a walk around bed but when you're driving down the road this mattress folds in half and you cannot sleep on it going down the road so um if somebody wants to take a nap they're going to have to use the table booth bed or the cab over bed going down the road and you just do that at your own risk of course kids you know if you're under 18 you got to be buckled up and if you're supposed to be in a car seat well um this is not really set up for car seats most 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 motor homes are not um Contrary to popular belief, most motor homes, most people with car seats, small children, I ran into this. My four-year-old daughter, soon to be five, um, you have to uh, pretty much buy a towable and sit in the truck while the parents tow the camper in the fifth wheel or the fifth wheel. 
but you know people argue with me about that but i mean i'm sorry i'm not going to put kids safety at risk to sell a, a motor home I, I just cringe when i see people oh i got three kids three young children i want to put them in a motor home well you you can do that your kids i'm not telling you what to do but it's dangerous it's not safe and it's illegal so but uh not something they really enforce but if you ever get into an accident guys you know, i don't care about the law i care about the kids safety so you know i went i sold my motor home to go to a 25 footer which is funny how it works out it worked out great because i love it so much better having a small over a big large class a but i did that because i had one of the rare models that had four forward facing captain's chairs attached directly to the frame so it was set up for car seats and uh, of course you know it was a blessing in disguise because we actually wind up liking it better than the big one <laughs> so go figure and you know and that, and that happens guys for those of you who've never owned an rv before i'm gonna let you in a little inside secret your needs will change in other words guys you may start out with a big one a small one a towable a motorized pop-up but your needs will and it will work for a long time but your needs will change you know i was so happy with the 38 foot class a but and it was a force change but actually once we started using it we liked it better and you know eventually our needs will change again we want to go to a fifth wheel or or another big motor home a diesel or or whatever and that's just normal part of it very few people stick with the same type of rv throughout the entire rv i guess rv uh, ownership career i guess is the best way to describe it our hobby life do you ever very few people stick with the same size and type rv you use one for a while you love it while you're using it but then you say hey you know what let's go a little small or a little bigger let me try towing one for a while or i want to do a class a or a b or a c or a b plus and you know it's funny how life works hey change is good you know keeps life interesting keeps everything from being you know just the same old same old and you know i like it that way but uh, anyway back to this tour y'all saw the bathroom it looks really nice got a skylight got a closet in here in the bedroom comfortable mattress uh slide out switch right there you do have a privacy curtain uh this unit can sleep up to six people once i fix the bed of course or fix the table booth <laughs> um and this unit is uh i mean like i said the only way you're gonna get one nicer is to buy a brand new one and spend and my gosh folks look at the price difference between this and a new one that's two or three cross-country trips i mean that's months and months and months and months on the road seeing pretty much everywhere in the country you want to see and still have money left over when you when you subtract the cost of this one from a brand new one and it's not just the cost but it's the fees it's the upsells that the new dealers charge you the the, the extra interest rate and they charge you on financing it, it's crazy guys absolutely crazy oh well it does make it easier to get in and out of this table when you're a big guy like me <coughs> might be uh kind of hard to eat like this unless you <laughs> I wouldn't put an I wouldn't put a an apple right there. It might roll downhill a little bit, but <laughs> hey, it works. But um, it's going to save you a ton of money, guys. And like I said, if you're looking for a, a, a specifically for a 2020 Red Hawk 22C, I mean, at least not nationally advertised. There's none cheaper, and everybody uses RV Trader because you're not looking at a bunch of two and three year old ads on RV Trader like you are on a lot of other sites. RV Trader. You can only run your ad for 30 to 60 or 90 days and you either have to pay to renew it or they automatically delete it from their website because you know not everybody when they sell an rv it deletes their ad well a shocker right there isn't it <laughs> believe it or not that that is a shocker huh you know i've called on stuff before for sale and it sold six months ago but they never oh i'll get around to deleting ad one of these days <laughs> But um, that's why I always write sold on my YouTube videos, FYI. And I always delete it off the website as soon as it's sold. And as soon as we take a deposit on one, we mark it on the website sales pending. So if you see sales pending on the website, that means it's got a deposit. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't call 
and leave your contact info in case the deposit falls through. Nine times out of 10, it, it doesn't, but there's always that one out of 10 chance and you'll be the first one they call to buy it unless somebody else already left their contact information before you. But, and we try to be fair to everybody, guys. You know, we know that with our prices, you know, our demographic, I guess, of buyers is so much more than most other dealers. Most other dealers, they mostly sell to people within, you know, 100 miles, 200 miles from their dealership. So they probably, because they price theirs the same as everybody else. I mean, if this thing was 79, 9, 84, 9, like everybody else, it'd be the same thing for us too. I said, I got a price for 64, 9, and, and my... In my little bubble around Ringo, Georgia, instead of just being a hundred or two hundred mile circumference, man, that thing's two or three thousand mile circumference or more. Because to save that kind of money, even with fuel prices, it's worth coming down here to buy. Not to mention, guys, y'all, the average consumer don't realize how much profit they are paying the dealership, not only at the sale for the price. But after the sale, when the financing and the upsells, like the extended warranty gap insurance, the uh, tire and wheel protection packages and the roadside assistance and even insurance and stuff like that, guys, y'all don't realize is how much you're overpaying for that stuff. And the bad thing is you're overpaying for something that's not worth the paper it's written on. Okay, I will tell you an insider secret in the RV business. And anybody that's ever sold RVs and worked behind the scenes like I have will tell you the exact same thing if they're if they're truthful. None of that stuff's worth a flip. The only good warranty, and it, it, I question this sometimes too, is a factory warranty. Uh, just recently, I had an issue with a uh, a brand that we just recently stopped carrying. I'm not going to mention names. They sent out a camper from the factory that had a torn spot in the awning. And the factory had put some kind of goop, like gray goop on the awning, stuff that we don't have nothing in the shop like it. Don't even know what it is, couldn't even identify it if I had to. Thought it was caulk, but it wasn't. But they put it on there just to get it out the door. And we caught it when we did our PDI, turned in a claim to get a new awning canvas so that they would pay for the awning canvas, pay for the labor to put it on, because it's not right that we should have to pay for something that we're not making much money on that the factory did. Well, guess what? Filed it three times, and all three times they turned the uh, claim down. So we stuck an awning canvas on it. We're just going to keep filing and filing and filing until they maybe they'll eventually pay us for it. I don't know. I mean, it was just a few hundred bucks, but still, it's principle of it. And that's a factory warranty, guys. And it was their screw up. But anyway, um, but anyway, the only warranty that's even halfway worth the crap is is the factory warranty. These aftermarket warranties. And they talk a good game. Oh, they they got these fancy brochures and these fancy terminology, and and they have these success stories and these reviews that are all fake. Hey, guys, let me tell you something. They're all 100% BS. You know, they sometimes they do pay claims, but most of the time they only pay partial payments, and they make the repair shop jump through so many hoops to just to get partial payment and the person who actually owns the RV jumped through so many hoops to get partial payment. They'll make, a lot of times the shops will make the customer go ahead and pay the repairs and just let them duke it out with the, uh, with the warranty company. You might be six months a year before you even get some of that money back. And you might not get any of it. And the reason why dealers push those gap insurances and extended warranties all this stuff is because it's marked up four times dealer cost. Yeah, they might make ten, fifteen thousand dollars on the motorhome, but they make another ten, fifteen thousand dollars on all the upsell products they're selling you. The gap insurance, the uh, Xylon interior exterior protection packages, the three, four, five year extended warranty. All you need is a factory warranty, guys, and that's included with the sales price. Don't ever let a dealer charge you extra for the factory warranty on a new RV. <sighs> I, it's just amazing to me, guys. People fall for that every day and still fall for it. And gap insurance, guys. Okay, first of all, 
this thing right here, I think book was 74 or 75 grand on NADA with no added options. And you can't even buy it for that because the closest one of the price is five grand over base NADA retail. Well guys, I got this one for 10, over 10 grand under base NADA retail. Why do you need gap insurance? You bought it 10 grand under book. But if you need gap insurance, get it through your auto insurance company. Insure your RV through your auto insurance company. If you need uh, roadside assistance, get it through your auto insurance company. Even though most of those aren't worth a flip because most independent uh, wrecker services and roadside services don't would, would rather work for cash. And most a lot of them, push the mom and pop ones, will not work with roadside assistance companies. For the same reason a lot of shops won't work with warranty companies because they make them jump through hoops to get their money. So, but buy it if you want to, but I'm just saying you're throwing your money away. Put that money up, put it in a savings account, bury it in a mason jar in the backyard and get into it when you need it. I promise you guys, you take the money you're going to spend on all those upsells, put it up and just get into it when you've got to do repairs or something like that on your RV. At the end of what would have been your normal warranty period, your extended warranty period is going to buy, whether you're going to buy two, three or four or five years. You're going to have a ton of that money. Chances are a ton of that money is going to be left over that you, would, you wouldn't have had if you went with the upsells. And not only that, guys, but when you finance for these new dealers, they are slaying you on the interest rate. They're marking the rate up over what you got approved for. I'm talking not just a quarter percent, a half a percent, percent and a half, two percent. That's pretty much standard. That you're overpaying. When you're talking, this thing new is 100 grand, on a 20-year note and they're and you're paying two percent over what the bank approved you for and you don't even know it guys that's thousands probably ten thousand dollars in higher rv payments over the life of an rv loan that you're going to pay and the dealer keeps about 80 percent of that that's that's the way rv business is guys that's why we're so different. That's why we sell five to six hundred RVs a year. We don't do that stuff. We make our money on what we call the front end, the difference from what we pay for it and what we sell it for. And we don't make that much at that, guys, like my grandfather used to say. We make our dollar with ten dimes instead of four quarters. We sell more RVs. We're a high volume dealer, so we don't have to make as much per unit. We don't have three hundred locations nationwide. We don't sponsor we don't spend millions and millions of dollars a year sponsoring college football bowl games, NASCAR races and and television shows and everything else, guys. Because who pays for all that stuff? The the dealer that sponsors that stuff doesn't pay for it. They do it first. But that cost is passed along to the consumers that buy RVs from them in the form of higher prices because they have higher overhead to recover that cost. Bigger is not better. Bigger RV dealers don't become big RV dealers by giving people fair deals. They become big RV dealers from maximizing profit on everybody that buys an RV from them. Maybe that's why we've never grown really beyond our current location in 54 years in business. Yeah, we've got eight acres. We're a small RV dealership, but we sell five to 600 used RVs a year. Yeah, we treat you like a person instead of a number. Yeah, we've got generations of families that have bought RVs from us, some from halfway across the country. Yeah, we have people that come from all over to uh, buy RVs from us because of our prices and our way of doing business. Yeah, we're not going to be as big as Rip Off World. We don't want to be that big. We don't want to be franchise dealers. We don't want to be corporate dealers. We're a mom and pop independent dealer, and, and we're going to give you your best deal. We're haggle-free firm prices. You can't beat our prices. I mean, we're not going to save you just one or two thousand or a few hundred bucks. We're going to save you ten thousand dollars, fifteen thousand dollars on this particular one. Not just on the price, but no fees, which is app plus applicable sales tax, or no dock fees, no prep fees, none of that junk. We're going to save you money on financing, and we're going to have no upsells. That's going to save you thousands there. That's Parkway RV Center, guys. That's why we've been in business for as long as we have. That's why we're going to continue to stay in business, guys. As long as you'll, as long as y'all have us, we'll be here. Third generation, family owned and operated, right here, one location. We don't have a corporate headquarters. We don't have a CEO. We have an owner, a president. Say that. <laughs> and we do things our way, guys. We don't have a board meeting. We don't have board members. 
I mean, it, it, we just keep things just like we do ourselves, easy, simple, and done. Come out and visit with us, guys. You'll be glad you did. We're open six days a week, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Time, Saturday, 9 to 5. We're the only dealership around. We've got well over 100 used RVs in stock. Just got in three Class Cs this afternoon, including this one. A um, little bit of everything. I've got camper vans. I've got Class Cs, Class A's, gas, diesel, uh, travel trailers, fifth wheels, towables, uh, hybrids, pop-ups, toy haulers. A little bit of everything in a variety of price ranges, guys. And, and I've got some stuff that needs work. If you want to buy like a back road bargain, I've got just, you name it, I've probably got it. If I don't have it, I, I can get it coming in. I mean, I've got, we, we sell 15 to 20 units a week. We buy that many a week. If you got one for sale, give us a call. As long as it's nice, it's clean, we can make an agreement on the price, give us a call. We'll pick it up. As long as we can make the numbers work out for both of us, we'll pick it up anywhere in the country. 706-965-7929. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Sorry, it's been a long video. Um, this will be the last one I'll do today. Stay tuned for some more tomorrow. Mostly C's, but I did just bring in two A's. Uh, Going to look at some more tomorrow. Got a few campers to look at tomorrow. Um, and... Um, did a diesel earlier today that's pretty nice i think they already may have it sold believe it or not which happens and guys that brings up my point if you see something you like and it doesn't say sold call right away 706-965-7929 now guys for the price we charge at 64.9 we inspect the following systems and that is we check the water systems which we check for plumbing leaks we check water heater water pump make sure all that works right you got hot water and all that all your spigots and shower and all that outside shower too uh, we check your generator make sure it runs and puts out like it's supposed to which it is we check your refrigerator and freezer make sure it gets the operating temp we check your roof air make sure it gets cold we check the drivability of it we check your step make sure it works um and if we find anything wrong with those systems we fix it now we're going to fix this table so don't worry about that. Even though it's not something we normally fix, we're going to go ahead and do it. Because it's, I mean, it's a ten, it's a ten-minute fix and a twenty-five dollar part. Why wouldn't we? And anything else, any other Mickey Mouse stuff, which I doubt you're going to find anything. But if you do, it's going to be as is. Uh, backup camera works. Um, dash airs works. Radio works. Uh, no check engine lights. Don't think you're going to have any issues, guys. But I still want you to come look at it for yourself, inspect it or hire a third-party inspection services yes guys i'm a used dealer recommending you hire a third-party inspector a few hundred bucks you know what you're getting into before you get into it because i don't know we try to buy really nice stuff but we don't have x-ray glasses and we don't have a crystal ball so please remember that hire an expert to come look at it it's the best few hundred dollars you'll ever spend chances are they're going to give it a clean bill of health but any rv you buy guys you're going to work on in some shape form or fashion doesn't matter if it's new or used that's just the nature of owning one guys if you can't come to terms with that you've got no business buying one to begin with anybody that tells you you can buy an rv and never work on it they're a liar i'm going to tell you right now from 25 years as an rv owner not just in the business but thank y'all so much for watching wow 28 minutes all right guys call me uh, subscribe, smash me a thumbs up, comment, and look forward to seeing you here in beautiful Ringo, Georgia. Uh, one more thing, nationwide delivery available for $1.50 a mile. Thanks again for watching.